Welcome to a new series where we take a look at the different 2024 options for the Springboks. Who we think should be playing for the Springboks, who we think is just on the cusp, and who we think is only a club player. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 11 different scrum offs, the options for the Springboks, and who I think should be playing for the Springboks and maybe who has to do a little bit more work. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I do read all of the comments and I love to see some of your opinions. Also, if you haven't, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So without further ado, let's jump in to the first option. Now we're first gonna go through the bull scrum offs. The first option is Zach Berger. Now Zach Berger came up through the Krikwas where he played very, very well. He was the shining star in the Curry Cup, and now he's moved over to the Bulls, where he often starts the bench this last weekend. He did start for the Bulls, and he had a decent game, but with the likes of Ambrose Papir also in that side, I just don't think Zach Berger has what it takes to play for the Springboks at the moment. So the first for me, Zach Berger definitely goes into club level. Then staying in the Bulls is Ambrose Papir. Now, Ambrose Papir has been absolutely tearing it up for the Bulls in the URC see over the past couple of weeks he's definitely been one of the form players for the Bulls and it was a little bit surprising that he wasn't added to the alignment squad obviously Rassi is looking for uh, some new talent in that alignment squad which is why he named so many young players and to not see Ambrose Papir on that list was a little bit disappointing for me as a Bulls supporter I do think he's been playing some phenomenal rugby he's very quick out of the ruck his kicking game is phenomenal and his attacking and defensive game is also right up there for me I think Ambrose Papir if he keeps putting together good performances we could see him get a, a spot in a Springbok team somewhere this year but for me at the moment I think he's just on the cusp he just has to do a little bit more to convince Rassi that he needs a Springbok jersey then we move over into the cheaters and one of the veterans scrum offs still playing in South Africa it's Ruan Pinot now um, a lot of you might have forgotten about Ruan, uh, Ruan Pinot just because we don't see the cheaters playing that much rugby but you have to remember how much experience Ruan Pinot has he won the 2007 World Cup he can definitely still cut it for the big dogs but with this new movement that Rassi and the team are going for and choosing a bit of younger players with a look to the 2027 and 2031 World Cup I just don't think Ron Pino is an option for the Springboks this year so I'm going to put him in the club level then we move on into the Lions options now there's two very very good options here Nohamba who was playing 10 for the Lions for a while but that's only because Hendrix was injured he has now moved back to scrum off position uh, over the last weekend and he's one of the real up-and-comers in South African rugby at the moment he got added to the alignment squad so obviously he's on the radar of the Springbok coaches but I think what sets him aside from the majority of these players or these options at scrum off is that he is a utility back he can play scrum off we've seen how good he can be at fly off and it wouldn't surprise me if he can even play fullback so for me no, no humber i think it will be a little bit disappointing if we don't see him get at least one cap this year i think he's had a phenomenal season so far and definitely deserves it so for me i'm gonna put no humber in that springbok category then staying in the lions we've got morne funden back now when hendrix got injured at the lions and no humber moved to 10 then he took over the role of scrum off he's a physical very nippy number nine Maybe he's, he's, he's still a little bit too young and I don't think he has enough experience or too much of an X factor like a lot of these players do. While he, get, he, while he got the job done for the Lions, once Nohamba moved back to number nine, then he moved to the bench. So for me, I think he's still got a couple of years to mature a little bit. Maybe we will see him in the 2027 World Cup squad. He also did get added to the alignment squad. So Rassi obviously sees some future with him in, uh, in a Springbok jersey. But for the moment... I don't even know if he's on the cusp because I look at these other options and I just don't see how he's going to beat out most of them. So for me, I'm unfortunately going to put Mornay in that club level. Then if we move on to the Sharks, the first option is Grant Williams. Now Grant Williams has played for the Springboks before. He was sort of an up-and-comer in 2023, got a couple of caps. Unfortunately, he did get injured at Ellis Park. So he was out for a little bit. And with the form that the Sharks are in at the moment, I just don't think we've seen that much of Grant Williams. For me, obviously, Grant Williams has been a Springbok. He has that X factor. He has that elusiveness. And I do think he beats out a lot of these scrum offs 
that are on this list. But for me, I, I think he's just on the cusp at the moment. See, I don't think he's at Springbok level. He doesn't have the consistency at the moment. And with the competition being so great, I just don't know if we're going to see him in a Springbok top this year. So for me, I'm going to put Grant Williams in on the cusp. Then another scrum off coming out of the Sharks is Jaden Hendricks, who also got added to the alignment camp. So there is there is a bit of a future for Jaden Hendricks. Uh, again, it's very, very difficult to see him playing ahead of the likes of a Fuff de Clack. But he does have that X factor. His kicking game isn't bad. He finds gaps all over the field and he's a little bit more of a playmaker and maybe one of those scrum offs that could also be used as a utility back just a little bit. He can play a little bit of fly off, maybe a bit of full back. But for me, at the moment, I think he's just on the cusp. He has to put together a couple more performances this year for the Sharks. Again, very difficult to be on the Sharks team at the moment with the form that, that they're in, but a very, very talented player and definitely one to watch out for in the future. And then we move over into the Western Cape, the Stormers. Now, there's two very, very interesting options here. Obviously, Herschel Yankees was somewhat of a hero back in the 2019 World Cup and then sort of slowly fell off of the Springbok radar. He's now not even starting for the Stormers at the moment over the weekend. He came off the bench because Paul DeVette started for the Stormers. I'm not too sure what to make of Paul DeVette at the moment. He's sort of under the radar. Not too many people know about him or speak about him. Obviously, he gives good delivery to Marnie and the backline of the Stormers. But again, I think he's just missing that little X factor. That's something, there's just a little something missing from Paul DeVette at the moment. Herschel Yankees obviously had that in the 2019 World Cup and maybe even 2018, 2020, which is why he, he played um, in the World Cup. But he's also seemed to not lost his way a little bit, but maybe just lacking a little bit of confidence. We know that Herschel Yankees can get it done at, on the biggest stage against the biggest teams. So if he can just find something at the moment, then I do think he could be back into the Springbok squad. For me, Paul DeVette, yes, he does start for the Stormers, but I just don't know if he is a Springbok number nine. So I might do something quite controversial here. I'm going to put Paul DeVette in club and I'm going to put Herschel Yankees on the cusp because I just don't think he has the confidence at the moment to play for the Springboks. And now we move into our two last options. Now, Quibus Reina, again, using the 2019 World Cup, using the 2023 World Cup, he is that impact player that comes off the bench, that can play wing, that can play scrum off, that really impacts the game, changes the flow of it. He can score a try out of nowhere. I mean, he scored so many tries against Canada. He, was, he has a try scoring record in a World Cup. He's been absolutely tearing it up for Montpellier this week, uh, this season. There's headlines coming out all the time about Quirbus Reinach and how well he's playing for Montpellier over in France. So for me, I think he's he's actually hitting what probably one of the best form patches of his life at the moment. And I would not be surprised to see him in a Springbok jersey. So for me, I'm going to put put Quirbus Reiner in the Springbok category. And then our final option, Fuff de Clack, Fuffy, the icon of the Springboks, number nine. He's won it in 2019. He's won it in 2023. He's playing over in Japan for the Yokohama Cannon Eagles. We don't, want, we don't see too much of Fuff during the season just because I don't think many people watch the Japanese league just because it's a little bit inaccessible to us here in South Africa. But you can never, ever write off Fuff de Clack. He's that little Jack Russell that always brings the energy on defense, on attack. His kicking game is phenomenal. Yes, he was used a little bit differently in the 2023 World Cup, but... He still is one of our most experienced scrum offs. He still is probably one of our best scrum offs. And while they might start phasing him out in the next couple of years, I do think for this year, especially against Ireland coming up, he will be our starting scrum off. So for me, I'm going to put Faf de Klaak in that Springbok category. So that's how I see those 11 options lining up. Let me know if you disagree with me in the comments or if you agree with me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Peace.